this is what's left of the rotor. It's kind of dark. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can get a better angle where you can actually see. Anyway, that's half of it. You can see where it's sheared completely in two. That's the other half. Those are the vents that are, the slots I should say, vents that are in between the two layers of rotor. There's actually a fair bit of the back half of it left. Front half, I would assume it's exploded or just eat completely away. I don't know for sure. If it's exploded, it didn't do any damage to the rim, it don't look like. The caliper sliders are all the way out and possibly bent. I'm not sure yet. I cannot pull this caliper back forward. I'm Literally, I've got my foot up against the frame and I'm pulling as hard as I can and it won't move. And I don't know, I think you can really see, but now yeah, you can't. Well, you can sort of. Those little edges right there are razor freaking sharp. Surprisingly, the brake line's not cracked. Looks like it's been spraying some fluid out, though. Caliper's overextended. Pads are below metal to metal. I got a flashlight now. Now you can see that's all that's left. I've been pulling on that for a minute. I don't know if it moved or not, but sliders are almost all the way out. Hang on. Let's stick my finger back in here. Yeah, it's not as far as it was, but there. Sliders are out to right, like right there. I don't know how the caliper stayed on the car. Probably only did because the uh, what was left of the rotor that broke off actually has hit the bracket and the hub ABS sensor there's bunch of metal shavings all over it that's from where this has been eat away probably gonna need a new ABS sensor dust shields gone probably exploded the dust shield but now keep in mind we drove this car home from Sevierville like this did not know it was like this at 50 and 60 mile an hour on Chapman Highway the car was impounded it was in a police chase we went and got it back the woman would have got away if the car hadn't died on her but it died Yeah, I'll get some more video later. After I try to get that caliper off. I don't know if it's going to come off or not. It's got Allen head bolts in it. Alright. Well, there's the hub part of the brake rotor. Here's one side of the rotor. Ow, sharp. It's what's left of the other side. It's kind of dark and this flashlight's kind of a piece of crap. Caliper's leaking from being overextended. I don't know if I can get away with pushing it back and it actually seal or if I should just rebuild it or replace it for that matter. Doesn't look like the hub or any of the bracketry's bent. I'm hoping it's not because that's not exactly a cheap repair. All I gotta say about this is, uh, he got lucky. That's my dad, he drove it back from Sevierville. He got lucky to make it back in one piece. The other side's fine. ABS lights been on on it, so 
ABS could have been making that brake lock up. This side's fine, see? I mean, uh, you, know, you can't see what I'm doing, but this rotor's not even worn hardly. It's got a little bit of grooving in it right there, but not major. That's just from the pads being wore down almost to the metal. Here's the pads off of this side, though. The back pad. That's the inside pad. There's a little bit of friction material left on it. This one, the outside pad, the one that was riding against that before it broke, is bent and eat away in the middle. Ow! And it's sharp. I'm very sharp. Sorry, I had a flashlight in my mouth. I don't know how how you even drive a car with the brakes that bad, but they were driving it like that. And who knows how hot it's got to have turned that blue, turned all these blue, and completely ate the outside of the rotor away. And it's been riding like that for a while, because, I mean, the... the Vents are wore down. It's it's an absolute miracle. It didn't lock up. Uh, I can't really hold my flashlight at a good angle, but yeah, see the fins are even wore down. They're worn on a taper. The fact that it broke off the hub is the only thing that kept it from locking up. Well, I don't know if they left a piece of metal going down the road or if it just ate through the front and disintegrated it from rubbing metal to metal for so long. Because if it exploded, it would have locked up immediately, you'd think. And there wouldn't be no taper wear on this. It would have just either locked up and wrecked them or locked up and broke. But it's wore like it's been spinning like that for at least a thousand miles. few hundred no shit I mean, yeah it's been to Chattanooga and back and who knows where else like I said earlier the car was in a police chase and the woman would have got away but the car died I don't know what the condition of the rear brakes are yet it's drum rears It's been bottomed out, too. Nah, nothing looks bent from up here, though. I know you can't see on camera hardly, but take my word for it. Everything's pretty well straight. Well, to pull apart in a couple of days, hopefully it'll be back on the road. Wish we'd never even tried to sell this car. Who's gonna do that? Used to be a beautiful car. Now it's what's left of a car. Is it? I didn't even notice. No, it's not. It's there. It's there. The fender's bowed a little, but it's there. I don't know. I don't know if you can really see that, but they busted the windshield on it too. That was not busted when we initially sold the car. The story behind this is we sold the car on time and the woman quit paying and put out a rumor that she was in jail. She was not in jail. She did get locked up, but her mother came and bailed her out immediately. They got the car impounded. Took us a week, was it? Week and a half? 
uh, three weeks to find out where the car was. She paid uh, around 800 on the car. We sold it for 15. She paid about eight. It cost us six, a little over $600 to get it back out of impound, and it'll probably cost us more than what we've got left from what she paid just to get it back on the road again. And making it even more expensive, it's going to need tires now. She's burnt the wheels off of it all the way around really. Uh, this one's got a little bit of tread left. Uh, he says the back ones are halfway decent. They're probably flat spotted from him grabbing the damn handbrake trying to stop it on the way home. It had no brake fluid in it when we got it and was a quart and a half low on oil. I dumped a can of brake fluid in it, pumped the brakes up as much as I could and dumped oil to it and we started for home. We got there right as the junkyard was about to close. Yeah, it went to a junkyard instead of the police impound yard, but they did at least inform us of where it was. Well, we called and inquired as to where it was, and the officer finally called us back after the fees went up so they'd make more money. Hopefully it'll, get, it'll be back on the road in a week or two. But yeah, this is this is what's left of it. One of 600 and something made that year, I believe it was. I might be wrong on that number. It's got the 2.4 liter quad four in it. Most of them had two twos in them. This one's got a 2.4 liter quad four in it from factory. Was a fast car for what it is. Yeah, when I get done with it, it'll be fast again. I don't know if it'll be faster than mine or not, but mine that you can't even see over there because it's too dark, but we will find out. <laughs>